Today, I can finally come home early for the first time in a while, so maybe I'll make Jessica's favorite beef hamburger. I was walking home, picturing my granddaughter Jessica's happy face, and just as I got in front of my house, it happened. A car turned the corner, so I moved to the side of the road to get out of its way. The car passed slowly right in front of me. In the driver's seat was my husband, Greg, and in the passenger seat was Jessica. As I watched the taillights fade away, I was overwhelmed with an uneasy feeling. Jessica was sitting in the passenger seat, slumped and with her lips tightly pursed. Her expression was similar to the one she has when she's being scolded. I was sure that they weren't in the mood to have fun. About two weeks later, on a Saturday afternoon, I was at the dealer. Carol, your car is ready. The inspection is complete, but... The mechanic said, rubbing his hands together as if he was hesitant to say something. Your husband has been using this car lately, right? It's difficult to explain here. Could you come with me to check something? I followed the mechanic to where the car was parked. He opened the car and took out a plastic bag. Actually, during the inspection, we found this on the floor. I looked inside the bag and was shocked. It was Jessica's missing underwear. The underpants was crumpled up and quite dirty. So that's what this was about. I don't want this car anymore. Please dump this car. Leaving those words behind, I went home. My name is Carol. My husband Greg, our daughter Kate, our granddaughter Jessica, and I sit around the dining table having dinner as a family. Jessica just started second grade and seems to be having fun every day with a new school term. She's eagerly talking about what happened at school, her mouth full of food. And then, my friend Mandy got in trouble with the teacher. Hey Jessica, if you're going to talk, swallow your food first. Okay. Jessica obediently swallowed and immediately started talking again. Kate listened with a troubled yet amused smile on her face. Jessica is truly adorable. The word carefree seems to have been made just for her. And then, Grandma, guess what? The teacher chased a bunny and fell into a hole. Oh my, that's terrible. Did the teacher get hurt? Nope. Seemed fine. But her face was bright red. Kate and I burst into laughter at Jessica's story. It's moments like this that make me feel so happy. But this piece didn't last long. Suddenly, Greg's yelling filled the dining room. Are you kidding me? Why don't you attack there, cower? What have you been doing all this time? Greg wasn't yelling at us, but at the TV. There was a world wrestling match on the screen. Greg used to practice wrestling in his school days and still enjoys watching matches. But he has no problem spewing hateful words in front of Jessica during these matches. Now, he seemed furious over a mistake made by a competitor. Without caring about us, he kept shouting. Hey, go forward there. Why aren't you going forward? Are you an amateur? You're useless. Every single one of you is a weakling. His ranting was so obnoxious that I found myself getting irritated. Not at the athlete, of course, but at Greg. Hearing such foul language spoils the dinner we were enjoying. If he has that many complaints about the athletes, he should become a coach or join the match himself. That's what I thought to myself, but I was too scared to say anything, worried his anger might turn on me. Once, I tried to gently remind him, and although he didn't raise his hand, 
he did scream at me and stormed out of the house. Even after he returned, he stayed in a foul mood for days, and we couldn't have a proper conversation. Remembering that, I thought it best not to stir up trouble. Across the table, Kate and Jessica had lost their smiles from earlier, sitting quietly with their heads down, eating their food. When I looked closely, Jessica's fingers and lips were trembling slightly. The atmosphere had turned sour, and we scattered away from the dining table like a group of frightened spiders. While I was washing the dishes in the kitchen, Kate opened the door and peeked in. Her expression was tense, like something serious had happened. Mom, can I talk to you for a sec? What's up? Is something wrong? Yeah, I was putting away the laundry, and one of Jessica's underpants was missing. Mom, do you know anything about it? I stopped washing the dishes and looked at Kate. Underwear? Maybe it fell while I was gathering the laundry? Kate folded her arms and came closer, lowering her voice as if telling a secret. I thought so and looked around, but it's nowhere to be found. Maybe someone stole it. Don't be ridiculous. No way. It probably got mixed up somewhere. I'll look for it later. While we were talking, Jessica peeked in through the gap in the door. Oh, Jessica, done brushing your teeth? Yeah, finished it all. Jessica, didn't you lose your underwear? When Kate said this, Jessica turned her head away. I don't know. You don't know? Are you sure? Just as Kate was about to question Jessica further, we heard shouting from the living room. Why did you do that there? You suck. Just quit. How can you put on such a disgraceful match after that kind of training? It started again. I wish the match would end soon. I sighed thinking that. Kate also sighed. Jessica seemed to have taken the opportunity to go back to her room. She was no longer by the door. Hey mom, isn't there something we can do about that? If there was, it wouldn't be so hard. You should go to bed now. I'll go to bed after I finish cleaning up. You're right. Well, good night then. The next day, I was standing at the front door to see Kate off to work. It was just past 6.30. Well, I'm off. Please take care of Jessica. Kate, dressed in a pants suit, told me. This was a daily scene. Kate has always had a strong sense of responsibility and seems to feel guilty about having someone else take care of her child. But to me, Jessica is my beloved granddaughter so there's no need for such formalities. Don't worry, Jessica will be at school while I'm at my part-time job. Right now, it's my busy season, so I have to work late, but Greg will be here, so it's fine. Thanks. Kate said that and then checked her bag to make sure she hadn't forgotten anything. Jessica, all ready for school, came over. Oh, Jessica, you're all set already? Good girl. Jessica smiled happily. Kate bent down to Jessica's eye level and said, Jessica, listen to what Grandma says and be a good girl. Mommy's off to work now. Okay, I got it. All right, I'm off. Kate said and rushed out of the house. Kate has really grown into a reliable adult. It's hard to believe she was once that sickly child. When she divorced her cheating husband and moved back in with us, I wondered what would happen, but she seems to have stabilized a lot since then. As I prepared to go to my part-time job, it was already past seven. It was time for Jessica to leave for school, so I went to see her off, but sensed something different about her. 
I thought for a moment and immediately realized what it was. Jessica, where's your hairpin? You know, the one you really liked. Jessica's eyes shifted uneasily at my question. Um, well, if I wear a hairpin, the teacher will scold me, so I'm not wearing it. Oh, really? But I don't remember seeing any rule about that. Just as I said that, Greg came down from the second floor. The moment Jessica saw him, she gasped. Then she quickly said and dashed outside. I'm going now. Bye. Is Jessica hiding something from us? And she seems afraid of Greg. For Jessica's sake, I thought I should find the right moment to talk to Greg. Greg, still in his pajamas, was sitting on the sofa watching TV. Since his retirement, he's been working as a part-time staff member, but he has more days off than before. Hey, since my part-time job is going to be busier, could you look after Jessica when she gets home? Yeah, I got it. Don't worry. Also, the car inspection is coming up, so there will be some days when we can't use the car. After telling him that, I finished getting ready and left the house before noon. My workplace is a restaurant not too far from home. It's usually not that busy, but now it's the peak season, so it's quite crowded. I'm worried about Jessica, but I changed my mindset and walked to work. As expected, the restaurant was packed with reservations that day. I barely had a break as I took orders from the constant flow of customers and dealt with complaints. It was already past 9 p.m. when I left work. But Kate probably wasn't home yet either. She's working hard to earn money for Jessica. She even got permission from the company to do part-time work after hours. I hope she doesn't push herself too hard and collapse. Thinking about this, I walked home. When I turned the corner and saw my house, I stopped in my tracks, feeling a sense of unease. For some reason, not a single light was on in the house. Also, Greg's car wasn't there. Greg must have taken Jessica somewhere. Maybe they went to the nearby shopping mall. But is it safe to be out this late? I hope they haven't gotten into any trouble. Worried, I took out the leftovers from yesterday's dinner from the fridge and heated them in the microwave. I also made a mashed potato as a side dish. Just then, Greg and Jessica came back home. Welcome back, where have you been? But neither of them answered my question. The bath is ready. Do you want to take a bath first, or eat? When I asked that, Greg replied, Eat. Jessica had no smile on her face, looking down without saying anything. Something's off with Jessica. Was she scared of Greg but endured being with him? Jessica, why don't you take a bath? I deliberately avoided the topic and took Jessica's hand. But she shook off my hand and walked quickly toward the bathroom, saying, It's okay. I can bathe by myself. Something must have happened between her and Greg. I watched her small back as she walked away, and I almost burst into tears. As soon as Greg finished eating, Jessica came out of the bath, and Greg went in to bathe. I watched Jessica as she ate, but she didn't talk about her school day cheerfully like she usually did. She seemed terribly exhausted. Jessica, where did you and Grandpa go? I asked, but Jessica only said one word and nothing more. It's a secret. After finishing her meal, she quickly went to her room. Worried about the two of them, I finished my meal. A few days later, my busy period at work finally ended. 
I could finally come home early for the first time in a while, so I thought I'd make Jessica's favorite beef hamburger today. Picturing Jessica's happy face, I walked up to the front of my house. That's when it happened. A car turned the corner, so I moved to the side of the road to get out of its way. The car slowly passed right in front of me. Is Greg going somewhere? In the driver's seat was Greg, and in the passenger seat was Jessica. They didn't seem to notice me and drove away. Watching the taillights fade away, I was overcome by a sense of dread. Jessica, sitting in the passenger seat, was slumped over, her lips tightly pursed. Her expression was much like when she's been scolded. It was clear they weren't heading out for fun. But since I couldn't follow them, I just went back home. On the living room table, there was a note in Greg's handwriting. Taking Jessica out. We'll be late, but don't worry. Even though he said not to worry, after seeing them like that, I couldn't help but worry. I tried to push away my anxiety by making hamburgers. Time seemed to pass incredibly slowly. One hour, two hours went by, and they still weren't home. I didn't take a bath or turn on the TV, just waited for them to return. Finally, a little after 9 p.m., the front door opened. I'm home. Is Dad out? Where's Jessica? Without saying anything, I showed Kate the note Greg had left. She read it and frowned. Isn't it strange that Dad takes Jessica around so late? I think so, too. There are many things I want to talk about, but go change your clothes first. You must be tired. After changing her clothes, I told Kate that this wasn't the first time Greg had taken Jessica out late at night. It seemed Kate had also noticed that something was off with Jessica. But time passed without us reaching any clear answers. In the end, it was quite some time before they finally came back. Kate and I asked them many questions, but they only gave vague, evasive answers. Then, just like before, they ate silently, bathed, and went to bed immediately. Something is definitely wrong. They're hiding something. But how on earth can we get it out of them? About two weeks later, on a Saturday afternoon, I was at the dealership. I had taken the car for inspection that morning. Although Greg is the one who usually drives, the car is under my name, so I handle all the maintenance and visits to the dealership. I'm on friendly terms with the mechanics and often chat with them. A few years ago, Greg got into an accident and we visited the dealership as a couple. So, they know Greg is the one who usually uses this car. While I was sitting in the waiting room, I could see my car through the glass. Next to it, a young mechanic in his 20s and an older mechanic, who seemed to be in charge, were talking with serious expressions. Soon, the young mechanic approached me. Carol, thank you for waiting. The inspection is complete, Buck. He rubbed his hands together, looking like he had something difficult to say. I suddenly felt uneasy. What is it? Is there a problem? Recently, it's been your husband who uses this car, right? It's hard to explain here. Could you come with me to check something? Well, all right. I followed the mechanic to where the car was parked. The mechanic opened the car and took out a plastic bag. Actually, when we were inspecting the interior, we found this on the floor. It's hard to explain, so I'd like you to see it. I looked inside the bag and was shocked. It was Jessica's missing underwear. The underpants were crumpled up and quite dirty. 
Moreover, Jessica's favorite hairpin was also in the bag. It was twisted and had faint stains that looked like blood on it. I couldn't say anything as I looked at those two items. I was just in shock. But at the same time, it became clear to me that Greg was doing something terrible to Jessica. Since I wasn't saying anything, the mechanic probably grew uneasy. He leaned in to look at my face and spoke to me. Well, are you alright? If you'd like, we can contact the police on your behalf. Hearing his words snapped me back to reality. Sorry. Actually, these belong to my granddaughter. She probably hid them because she was embarrassed about having an accident. Oh, is that so? I apologize for jumping to conclusions. I thought something serious had happened. So, they belong to your granddaughter. He must have been thinking through various scenarios. Sorry for worrying you. Oh, by the way, is it possible to see the locations this car has been to using the navigation system? Yes, that's possible. Modern cars keep a log. That's how affairs get exposed, you know. Would you like to see? Yes, please. It didn't take long. The car had been to three places recently. Greg's workplace, the usual supermarket, and Greg's family home. Greg's family home is currently vacant, so there shouldn't be any reason to go there. So, it's almost certain that he took Jessica there. Convinced, I told the mechanic one last thing. Please dispose of this car. Then, after paying the inspection fee, I walked home. This car has likely become a trauma for Jessica. When I got home, I immediately confronted Greg about what happened at the dealership. These were found in the car. What on earth were you doing with Jessica? Nothing. Jessica probably hid her soiled underwear because she was embarrassed. Then why did you go to your family home? The location was in the car's navigation history. You had no reason to go there. There was a reason. To pull weeds and clean up. Jessica said she wanted to help, so I took her. Greg answered my questions while lying on the sofa, yawning. Out that late, Jessica is still in elementary school. You're being too noisy. What's your problem? Greg stood up and grabbed me by the collar. You told me to look after her, so I did. Why am I being blamed for this? Don't push your luck. I was terrified, fearing he might hit me. Instinctively, I closed my eyes. But even Greg wouldn't resort to violence. He shoved me toward the wall, laughing as he lay back on the sofa. My heart was pounding so hard that I couldn't speak. We're done here. Get lost. If you keep pushing me, I don't know what I'll do. In the end, I had to back off without getting any answers from Greg. I went to the bedroom and cried alone out of sheer frustration. But it's clear that I can't win against Greg by force. He could easily overpower me. However, I can't just let this go. With my face buried in the blanket, I began to plan my next steps. Later that night, after Greg went to bed, I discussed the day's events with Kate. Hearing my story, Kate's face turned red with anger, and she clenched her fists. I don't care if he's my dad. This is unforgivable. And treating you like that is just horrible. So, here's what I'm thinking. I want you to take a day off work on Monday. I'll take the day off too, and we'll keep Jessica out of school. That's fine, but what are you planning to do? Greg will be at work that day. During that time, I want us to talk to Jessica and find out what's really going on. Kate crossed her arms and thought for a while. 
I waited patiently for her to gather her thoughts. I understand what you're suggesting, Mom, but I'm worried about Jessica. She's surely been hurt by all of this. I understand that, but it's impossible to get it out of Greg, and we don't have any solid evidence. We have to hear it from Jessica. And then Monday came. Jessica seemed happy to have a day off from school, smiling brightly. So, Kate and I decided to ask Jessica the truth. Hey, Jessica, where did you go with Grandpa? It's a secret. Jessica, please, be honest with us. We're here to protect you. At Kate's desperate plea, Jessica's smile faded. She puffed out her cheeks in annoyance and stared at the TV. Jessica, please. Kate gently hugged Jessica from behind and whispered in her ear. Jessica's face twisted and large tears started to roll down her cheeks. I hate Grandpa. I hate him so much. She clung to Kate's arms and began to cry. I gently rubbed her back to calm her down. I'm sorry I didn't notice. You must have been so scared. But it's okay now. You're safe. Jessica cried for a while, but when she finally calmed down, she sniffled and told us everything. Grandpa suddenly said he was going to give me training. I said no, but he hit me. What kind of training? He called it wrestling. Even when I said it hurt, he wouldn't stop, and my hairpin got broken too. I hit it because I didn't want to get in trouble. And, about the underpants, I'm sorry. Even though I'm in second grade, I wet myself. Because Grandpa. Just recalling it seemed terrifying for her. Jessica's body trembled. That was more than enough. How could someone do such horrible things to such a sweet child? In my anger, I bit my lip hard. Thank you for telling us, Jessica. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Why don't you rest in your room for a bit? Kate took Jessica to her room. Unforgivable. I made a decision to protect Jessica. When Kate returned to the living room, I told her, I'm calling Greg. Kate immediately understood what I intended to do. She nodded without saying a word. What's going on? My lunch break's almost over. I'm hungry, so make it quick. I put the phone on speaker. I heard everything from Jessica. You were giving her wrestling training, weren't you? Yeah, that's right. I was teaching her wrestling. He spoke as if he had done something perfectly normal. You knew Jessica hated it, didn't you? Her body is covered in bruises. Shut up. This is your fault. I couldn't teach you to wrestle because of your sickly body. Hearing Greg's words made my body flush with anger. Don't do things without considering others. She's at an age where she listens to everything adults say. You need to be more considerate. Huh? That's exactly why. You're an idiot. Listen, it's better to start sports early. Frankly, Jessica's age is already late. So, you should stay out of this. Then why force her to do something she hates? Nobody asked you to. As Kate and I confronted him, Greg grew increasingly irritated and his tone became rougher. My dream was to become an Olympic athlete. That didn't happen. But now, things are different. I can make Jessica an Olympic athlete. That's just your ego. Don't force your dreams onto Jessica. Shut up. You'd be proud if someone from our family became an Olympian. You could brag to your friends. And with the money she earns, we could live comfortably. It's not a bad deal. 
Greg was fixated on making Jessica an Olympic wrestling athlete. But it was clear this was for his own sake, not Jessica's. He was taking out his frustrations and regrets from his past failures on his granddaughter. How pitiful. I was beyond anger, I was simply disgusted. There's no point in continuing this conversation. What did you say? Listen, Greg, no one can fulfill your broken dreams for you. Even if Jessica made it to the Olympics, it wouldn't make you great. What are you trying to say? The only thing we can do now is watch over her growth. You should know that by now. So just give it up. Your dream is over. Don't mess with me. I, I. Greg's words trailed off. All I could hear was the faint sound of his teeth grinding. Stop trying to teach wrestling to Jessica. If you want to train so badly, then take lessons yourself. With that, I hung up the phone. There was nothing more I wanted to say to Greg. When I glanced at Kate, she was quietly shedding tears. Kate, are you okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. After that, Kate and I packed up our belongings. We were leaving this house's. I had spent many years with Greg, but I could never forgive him for hurting Jessica. So, from the moment Jessica first told us what happened, I had decided to divorce him. Jessica quickly understood and started packing her school things. Once we were ready, I called a taxi, and we headed to the nearest hotel. I left a note on the table. We're leaving. I'll send the divorce papers later. A few months later, on a weekend, we were gathered around the dining table in our apartment. On the plate was Jessica's favorite beef hamburger. She was happily talking about her playtime with friends from earlier that day. And guess what? Mandy stepped in dog poop. Hey now, don't talk about that during dinner. Kate said that while laughing joyfully. Watching the two of them made me feel so happy. As soon as we left the house, Kate explained the situation to her boss. Then her boss suggested that she move to an apartment owned by her boss. My divorce from Greg was finalized quickly. It turned out that someone living near Greg's family home had witnessed his interactions with Jessica. It was clear that what he was doing couldn't be called training. This neighbor had even recorded a video as evidence and reported it to the police. This irrefutable proof not only led to the divorce, but also required Greg to pay a substantial amount of alimony. Greg, perhaps realizing his position, didn't put up much of a fight. The car from the dealership was arranged to be sold off. Hey, Grandma, listen. Sorry, what is it? I then listened happily to Jessica's stories. I'm so glad she's regained her energy. Jessica had suffered emotional wounds because of Greg. Kate quit her part-time job to spend more time with Jessica. I also did everything I could to support Jessica's emotional healing. Thanks to that, she gradually regained her smile. The scars on her heart won't heal easily. But both Kate and I plan to be there for Jessica always. And guess what? I'm going out to play again tomorrow, so I'll have lots of stories to tell. All right, I look forward to it. Be careful and have fun.